Moving on from uh, HSV, um, HIV to, to CMV, it's a great pleasure to um, welcome uh, Bill Rawls, um, who is the Senior Medical Virologist um, at South East Sydney and um, University of New South Wales. Um, Bill uh, has a long-standing interest in CMV and uh, has um, uh, recently joined the board of the AHMF, and we're very privileged to have Bill talking to us today about CMV infection. Bill. Thank you very much for the kind words, Adrian. So I was going to briefly talk about sort of CMV in, in the perspective of HIV uh, clinically very briefly at the start and then um, talk a little bit about ret uh, CMV retinitis because I guess that was uh, the major problem when I was um, a registrar looking out for HIV patients and um, people with HIV AIDS, um, particularly in the end stage of their life and of course post heart uh, the situation with CMV retinitis is completely changed and I was going to just summarise that. One of the particular interests that um, I have and uh, our lab has and I have clinically is in the area of antiviral resistance and I thought um, given that uh, antiviral resistance is something we often don't talk about uh, I would uh, focus a little bit upon that towards the end after talking a little bit about um, uh, treatment. And I've set my timer on 15 minutes. So, um, just a little bit about the sorts of problems, particularly as I mentioned about CMV retinitis and then a, a bit about um, antivirals. And um, I guess one of the issues is that seropositivity is so common in HIV, in people infected with HIV, uh, that we tend to sort of forget that not everybody is infected with CMV. But the reality is most of the patients that I see and uh, that you would see have CMV, so the seropositivity rate mm -hmm. approaches 100%. This is the, a blood bank cohort that we published a couple of years ago. And in that sort of, the sort of uh, 20 to 50 year age range in the rest of the population, the CMV seropositivity rate is about 50%, 60%. So the ways that what happens in HIV, well, the reality is CMV is a ubiquitous virus. If 100% of, of people with HIV are infected, then 100% of them potentially with a sufficient immunosuppression can develop a range of problems that many of you will be yeah, very familiar with, um, and I won't go through in detail, except to say that a, a couple of the, the examples I'm going to show, show you, particularly chororetinitis, seem to be highly associated with um, immunosuppression suppressed people with HIV, so people with HIV AIDS, as well as gut infection. And the eyes tend to get the focus because that's what you see and that's how patients present. The reality is that probably um, uh, as many or more uh, HIV AIDS patients who have chororetinitis have gut infection and a lot of the diarrhoea and a lot of the symptomatic illness in the gut is actually due to, to some extent to CMV. And the difficulty with a virus that's infecting 100% of of your patients that is reactivating in a significant number of them as they become immunosuppressed you know, is that sorting out what's causing disease from uh, what's just infection. So the sorts of problems, this is um, CMV pneumonitis but um, equally of course it could be a number of other infecting agents um, and of course if we find uh, pneumocystis and CMV in the same lung are they both causing the disease and it's, it's one of the big problems and the benefits as, as a virologist are obvious that we've now been able to measure viral loads not only for HIV but also for CMV as well as a number of other herpes viruses. Um, gut disease, uh, where does gut disease, where is it CMV and where is it overgrowth with uh, fungi like candida. Um, the gut extends from your mouth to your anus, this is the lower end of the esophagus, this is an ulcer which took some time to resolve was enormously difficult to diagnose and guess what, uh, when you biopsy it had CMV in it. Now does that mean it's causing it? Well the reality is in, in my practice if it's there and there's tissue damage uh, and they're in the right clinical setting then it is causing it. Why is that important? Well, be, Because you don't want to give your ancyclo to anybody that you don't have to give it to. Uh, and there's also, um, this is uh, not predicting too well, but these are areas of ulceration, hemorrhage, ulceration, hemorrhage, uh, gut um, perforation, all of it are due to CMV potentially. So um, there's no, no doubt that it's a clinical problem and as I mentioned in 15 minutes I thought the best thing was to concentrate a little bit on CMV chororetinitis. Pre-heart, um, you saw it in 20 to 40 percent of patients with HIV AIDS. Um, most people uh, when they were 
uh, eventually, in, in the pre-hard era, uh, eventually dying, were, were often blind or on their way to blindness. The median time to regression was, was about um, a couple of months, three months. Uh, median survival after diagnosis was about six to ten months. And basically you had to give people um, intravenous therapy indefinitely. You often saw retinal attachment which had to be treated on its merits. Mm -hmm. But of course we're living in the post-heart era and um, it's really now very uncommon. Um, progression really doesn't occur very commonly and the mean survival is well over 12 months after diagnosis of CMV choriretinitis. And we've got a range of treatments. I've listed um, some of them. Um, and often, of course, you are able to discontinue treatment with uh, immune recovery. So a completely different um, situation. Of course, we're talking post-heart in Australia, in, in uh, developed countries, um, but in developing countries, you're still in a pre-heart era, and so the situation is, um, is as in the previous slide. And the appearance, um, this is typical of uh, CMV choriretinitis. Um, I'm sure all of you have seen it, either in pictures or in patients. Hemorrhage, um, ischemia, and um, this kind of d diverse disease. Of course, this is actually HSV choriretinitis, just to um, let you know. This is CMV choriretinitis. And the reality is that there was a study published about five years ago which looked at the diagnosis just on the basis of uh, appearance, <coughs> excuse me, by ophthalmologists and they got it wrong about one in eight times. But this is CMV on the basis of biopsy. This is CMV, very, quite sort of marked disease with hemorrhage and ischemia. Uh, this is a small hemorrhage and this is, uh, in fact, could be a number of things, but this is also CMV disease and these, of course, are cotton wool spots. Um, ophthalmologists will clearly distinguish uh, these benign lesions from chororetinitis due to CMV, but my point is that they can't distinguish between chororetinitis due to CMV or due to varicella zoster virus or due to, due to HSV. In typical lesions, it, it, they get it right most of the time, but in the atypical lesions, it can be quite difficult. <laughs> the important thing, of course, is that um, there, there is a differential of CMV retinitis, and as CMV chororetinitis becomes less common, then the uh, other diagnoses become more, relatively more common and the, the, the initial risk of making an error just diagnosing chororetinitis due to CMV on the basis of appearance increases. So your risk of error obviously increases and there's a wide range of other things that can cause chororetinitis and I've listed some of them there. Uh, this is just progression and I like this slide because uh, um, I think it demonstrates very clearly, this is the left left, uh, left retina, right retina, see quite clear CMV diseases in a patient with HIV AIDS. Um, progression in the right eye and treatment with gancyclovir, uh, sorry, treatment with um, intravitreal gancyclovir and resolution, but the left retina develops CMV disease as well. And this is really to illustrate the point that CMV is a systemic disease and just because it's, it's manifesting in the eye, uh, doesn't mean that's the only place that it is, and I've made the point about the gut, but of course it's a systemic disease and the virus is, uh, in the appropriate circumstances, reactivating in a number of organs. And so even though you may treat the eye with intravitreal gancyclovir, the disease continues elsewhere. <coughs>